Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today, where we are going to show you how to become a franchise fact gathering machine. And today, um, you're going to learn a lot of interesting information. You may want to write it all down. So if you haven't already, go ahead and grab a pen and a piece of paper so that you'll have that handy for any notes that you might want to take. Um, my name is Rhonda. I'm emceeing this webinar today for Joel, and I look forward to uh, talking to you guys more. We will go ahead and get started now. I'm going to introduce Joel and let him get all this information out to you guys. So I want to introduce the franchise king, Joel LaBava. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this short webinar on researching a franchise. Uh, I am Joel LaBava, the Franchise King. Quick story, a lot of people always ask, Joel, why are you called the Franchise King? Well, it's a pretty boring story, but it's short, um, and it'll give you uh, some time to get situated and get comfortable and get your feet up on the desk. So one day in Cleveland, Ohio, at the largest Beachwood, uh, the largest Chamber of Commerce event anywhere, uh, the Beachwood, Ohio Chamber, uh, had a, uh, a huge, huge uh, expo, a small business show, and the director of the chamber, who, who knows me, uh, saw me from across the room as I walked into this huge event, and he yelled at the top of his lungs, hey, it's the Franchise King. So I said to myself, that name's kind of cool. So I decided to use it as a brand. A friend of mine, Jim Kukrell, a local online marketer and uh, ebook author expert, uh, suggested rather strongly that I hurry up and get that bad boy trademarked, which I did. So the Franchise King is officially trademarked. It was a few years ago, registered with the United States government, and it's official, and that's your really exciting story on how I became called uh, the Franchise King. So what does that mean for you? Not much. No, I'm kidding. It means that I know a little more than you do about franchising and about researching a franchise, and I'm going to try to... Uh, uh, show you some really cool things, some cool tips and tricks that you could use uh, as you research franchises. Uh, I'm going to turn you into a fact gathering machine. You know, all the people I've worked with over the years, hundreds of people I've worked with one on one, thousands of people I've been able to reach uh, through uh, some uh, in person seminars. I've done a, a lot of uh, work with the New York Expo, I've been there a few times. I speak uh, in a few places uh, in person. And also, obviously, I do webinars, and I do a lot of uh, writing. TheFranchiseKing.com forward slash blog uh, is the place to be if you want to read. Um, I have well over a 1,000 articles there that I've written for the past seven or eight years. So uh, check out my main website if you get a second and learn all you can about franchising. But right now, let's learn a little about the research part. You know, most of the people that I've talked to over the years have had one thing in common. They've wanted freedom and control in their professional and, and even in their personal lives. Whether or not they had uh, uh, lost their job and were downsized from uh, corporate America or uh, are still working and have idiotic bosses, uh, they've all wanted to really uh, own their own business. And as my late father said, they wanted to own what they do. So that's what I'm going to try to teach you how to do if you can become a franchise owner yourself. Today we're going to cover things like how to set up yourself for franchise failure, which is really how to avoid setting up yourself for franchise failure. Um, then I'm going to go into that in a second. Uh, and it has to do with this. I want you to start your franchise search um, for that perfect franchise somewhere that you um, uh, aren't now uh, searching. Uh, what I'm trying to say in um, a very bizarre way is that I want you to start your search for a franchise with you instead of going to any one of the great franchise websites like FranchiseDirect.com, Franchise.org, etc. Before you go to a website to start clicking on ads to find that perfect franchise, I want you to find out about you. I want you to get away from the electronics for a couple days. Get away from websites and internet and, and, and even your cell phone if you can. And uh, uh, take some quiet time. Get some quiet time. Get to that, that quiet place and uh, Try to figure out what your most powerful uh, assets are. You know, what are you really good at professionally? What are your top work skills? And then I want you to also uh, think about what are your dominant personal traits? 
Um, in other words, are you uh, outgoing or are you introverted? Uh, do you like things like uh, uh, being one-on-one -on -one with people or do you prefer talking to people on the phone? Or what do you like, you know? And, 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 and while you're doing this, start to kind of mold together all these things. So you have a list um, uh, of things on a piece of paper that you can start really, really uh, dialing down into what the franchise is going to look like for you. And, and we'll get into that uh, a little more. But if you if you find a franchise or two that you're really, really interested in, um, it kind of doesn't matter how good the franchise concept is if you don't do the research. You have to take the proper research steps. And that's, and that's what this is really going to be mostly about. Uh, also, in franchising, there are some legal issues. You need to protect yourself. And when I say protect yourself, this is not the time to get free legal advice from Uncle Bob or Aunt Martha, who really are your uncle and aunt and who have helped your family through the years with whatever, uh, uh, little car accident fender benders, um, things with uh, neighbor, neighbor disputes, you know, he ripped up my lawn and et cetera. This is the time to get a franchise attorney. Don't get free advice from an attorney who doesn't know anything about franchising. Pay for advice, pay for their expertise so you can cover yourself. Get a franchise attorney. You're also going to probably need a small business loan, and uh, uh, a lot of people go to the SBA. SBA.gov is a great website, and let me um, uh, give you a disclosure. Uh, I'm the exclusive writer on franchising for SBA.gov for their community section. Uh, I write a guest blog post uh, at least once a month, and you'll find about 30 articles at sba.gov. Just uh, uh, put franchises in the search box, and you'll be able to find my articles uh, easily. And uh, they're very, very informational in nature. Getting back to the SBA real quick, the Small Business Administration does not provide loans. They provide guarantees to the banks that provide loans, and some of these banks are uh, in your local area. So when you talk about getting an SBA loan, you're really getting an SBA guaranteed uh, a loan uh, from the bank. The bank is doing the loan, and the SBA guarantees uh, a major portion of it in case uh, the loan gets defaulted. So you're going to either go to the SBA, you're going to go to your local bank to go through the SBA, obviously. Uh, you might use a small portion of your retirement, which I am 100% okay with if it's, the, if it's a small amount and if it's the right stage in your life. Um, and there are other ways to get loans also, sometimes family, friends, et cetera. But you're going to be, you're going to want to make sure that you look at more than one loan option, and we'll get into that. The beginning of the franchise exploration process can be really, really frustrating. Uh, there are over 3,000 different franchise opportunities to choose from just in the U.S. If you add Canada, there are hundreds more. Uh, so it can be really, really uh, overwhelming. Here's some, here's some questions that you should ask yourself. Uh, the first one, where should you begin? Well, I told you, uh, well, I gently suggested that you don't start by going to franchise websites, but that you start with yourself. So make sure that you know what you're good at, what your personal traits are, the, the, the dominant ones, so you can start looking for opportunities that could be a match. That's how you choose. You don't choose a franchise because it's hot or because uh, your neighbor told you about it. Uh, you choose it because it's going to be a fit for you and for what you want out of a business. You will know if your choices are good ones if they fit what I'm talking about, if they fit what you want your business to look like and feel like, and if they fit your persona and, and uh, a franchise that can allow you to utilize your top most important professional skills could be a winner. And uh, uh, that's, that's really how to make sure that your choices are good, in addition to talking to existing franchisees of the concepts that you're looking at. Um, and I'll go into that in a little bit. The question that I really, really dislike the most when, when I talk to people, um, and I'm happy to answer it, but Joel, what is the hottest franchise? Or what are the hottest franchises? Well, you know, um, I even had a reporter call me uh, the other day and ask me, you know, what the best franchises were or what the hottest franchises were. Um, you know, uh, things that are based on opinion uh, usually don't go very far. Uh, things that are based on fact do go far. And I want to talk to you just for a second about uh, hot franchises. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, an old science experiment. 
having to do with gravity. Uh, what comes up must come down. I just want you to have that picture. What goes up must come down because hot franchises can get cold. Remember that. When you're looking for franchises, you may or may not want to get involved with a franchise that is supposedly hot because hot does not last forever. So as you're searching around, you may be attracted to things that are supposedly hot, but I want you to look at them and think of a long-term view uh, as opposed to the short-term. Boy, it's hot now. Everyone's talking about this. You know, I got to do it. Be careful. Um, sometimes uh, things get cold pretty fast. The criteria for choosing one needs to be your criteria. You need to own it. This is about you. Um, it is only about you. Um, if you have a family, obviously your family is involved in the decision, but in general, and, and most importantly, this, this is about you, and that's what your choice should become. Um, if you want to become a franchise owner, make it about you, and make sure that you use the things that you're really, really good at in the business. So you have to find a business that will allow you to do that. You should look at, uh, I say anywhere between 10 and 15 different franchise concepts as a first pass, and then limit it down to, I would say, less than five. Uh, once you start really digging into the research process, looking at more than two or three at the same time is challenging uh, uh, for anyone that's human. It, it's, it's just really hard. And uh, it will take you anywhere from two to four months to find that perfect franchise and to end up actually signing on the dotted line. The folks that I've worked with over the years uh, have have taken generally between 45 and 60 days from beginning to end, from searching, choosing, researching, and buying. So figure a couple months of your time uh, uh, for this process. Uh, don't do it too fast, and if you're really, really analytical, you don't want to do it too slow either. Uh, there's going to be that time where you're going to have to either say yes or say no. Um, don't analyze yourself out of the game because uh, you could pass up a good opportunity. That's just a gentle suggestion, because you want to get this right. You want to discover the possibilities that maybe you haven't heard about. And the only way to do that is to start looking at all the franchise websites, but only if you have a real good focus on what it is you're looking for, the things that could really, really improve your chances of success. Put those pieces together. You know, Use that list of yours, and then match that list to the possibilities out there. You'll see if you do it my way, um, you will quickly be able to narrow things down. So your search is gathering information. That's the first thing. Uh, you've got to uh, create a budget for yourself. Uh, most franchisors these days would really, really like you to have a minimum net worth of about three hundred to three hundred fifty thousand dollars. And when I say net worth, that is uh, your assets minus your liabilities. The difference between the two is your net worth. And uh, you should also have a liquid amount of forty to fifty thousand um, dollars to put up your own money in. So if the if the total cost for the franchise is two hundred thousand dollars, you know, figure you're gonna put between fifty and sixty thousand dollars of your own money in, maybe a little more. Uh, there are really no such thing, there's really no such thing as a uh, no money down franchise. Uh, when you apply for a small business loan, unless you have all cash, when you apply for a loan, you've got to have skin in the game. All right. So don't think about buying a franchise with no money down because it ain't going to happen. Uh, the wrong way to look at a franchise is to look at an advertisement, not do good research, and just buy the darn thing. Please don't do it like that because incorrect research or very little research can look like that. Um, it'll be over fast, you'll run out of money, and you will hate franchising as an industry. As I mentioned before, there are some legal stuff you need to know about. The first thing is that you will have to fill out an application. It is a formal application. Once you get to the point where you're requesting information from the franchise, uh, either before your first conversation uh, or after your first conversation with the franchise director, which is really a salesperson, you are going to be asked to fill out an application. Uh, the franchisor uh, needs the application for legal purposes, so they keep it on file, and you need it because you just need to fill out the stuff. So um, it is um, it, it is a must-do thing. You can't just uh, expect to get a lot of uh, free information for the franchisor without them knowing stuff about you also. Reverse the situation. If you were the franchisor, you'd want to know who you were talking to. 
uh, you will get a document um, called the Franchise Disclosure Document. You might want to write that down, FDD, Franchise Disclosure Document. This document is crucial and is required by law for you to have in your hot little hands, either physically or via uh, email. Uh, usually the franchisors these days uh, email it to you or provide a link to it on their, on their website, on the intranets, which is their, their kind of their private network. Uh, which they usually give you a pass, password or a pass key to. Uh, it is a very, very long document, a couple hundred pages, and it is really boring, but you need to read it. You need to read through it. 23 items by law are going to be listed. 23 different categories are going to be listed, and uh, uh, they are very, very important. Let's look at some steps that you need to take to help you with your decision. First of all, you need to find out if you learned all you can about the franchise concept, uh, you really need to. Um, do you feel all your questions were answered by corporate? You know, you're going to get to ask ask questions of both franchisees and franchise executives. Make sure you get everything answered. And I'm going to go over a few franchise questions to ask franchisees uh, in, in a couple minutes. But I want to make sure that you are thinking about this right now. Get in the mode of getting the facts. And becoming a franchise fact-gathering machine must include calling the people and asking the questions so you get good answers, all right? Uh, there's something called a discovery day. This is when you fly or drive to franchise headquarters, and it is a meet and greet, and you get to meet the support staff, the executives, and uh, something very important, they get to meet you, all right? If the discovery day is offered, not all franchisors do it, but most do, if it's offered, and you have pretty much made the decision to buy the franchise, you need to go there and visit. Uh, you need to make sure that if you're at the Discovery Day, you get enough information on the company and you get a feel for its culture. You know, are, are the people looking you in the eye? Do you feel like they're really just selling you a franchise and, and they're just going to get their franchise fee, their money up front from you, and kind of blow you off? Or are these people for real? You'll know if you're there in person. You'll, you'll just have to use your intuition and uh, uh, I can show you how to do that. Have you looked at a few small business loan alternatives? Don't just look at one. Look at a couple. It's always good to compare. Did you get a franchise attorney to help you with the franchise disclosure document and your contract, which is in, in it? Um, do not use Uncle Bob and Aunt Martha. Do not get free legal advice unless that free legal advice happens to be from a franchise attorney. One thing that a lot of people forget is having enough money to live on. You know, franchise investments... Uh, you're going to get a range once you look at a franchise. Let's say you're looking at a K-Bob Steakhouse, and the investment is anywhere from $250,000 to $300,000. That investment range is going to include an amount of working capital, maybe $30,000. This is the thing that is going to keep you afloat, help you buy inventory, et cetera, until you have enough money coming in to meet that. But the upfront investment does not include your fees for personal use. You know, you have to pay your mortgage, you have to pay your credit cards, you have to pay for gas. Make sure you have money set aside, all right? But for, especially for that first year, the startup period, which is really, really tough. Um, what is the worst thing that could happen? If, if your franchise fails, if you fail as a franchise owner, what's the worst case scenario? Go over this with an attorney, make sure you have a financial planner or an accountant to help you with the figures, and also make sure that you set up uh, your company the right way, whether it's a corporation, LLC, uh, or, or some other type of entity. Make sure that you are protected. And are you really ready to work harder than you've ever worked before? Do you think the 60-hour weeks at your job were tough? Having the added pressure of being an owner and having money in the game changes everything. As I said, you're going to have that introductory call, and it's really a let's get to know one another, to, to know one another kind of call, where the franchise director or the franchise salesperson is going to share some things with you, and, and he or she will expect you to share some things with them. Um, I'd like you to spend an hour on the introductory phone call, if possible, because what happens sometimes is, is you, you make assumptions. Let's say that you went to the K-Bob Steakhouse website and they had pictures of happy franchise owners um, uh, cooking steaks. And uh, you said to yourself, well, I don't know if I really want to cook steaks. 
Uh, I, I'm probably not interested in this franchise, but I've heard of it. Um, I don't even know if I should have the call with the franchise director, and you, you know, almost talk yourself out of it. Don't talk yourself out of it. Don't base your decision to have even just an introductory call with the franchise representative. Don't base your decision on, on an image you saw at a website or at a brochure. Um, how do you know that as the owner of a K-Bob's Steakhouse that you would really be cooking steaks? It might just be a nice picture. So the best way to do that is to directly ask the franchise representative, am I going to have to cook? Am I going to have to be you know, over a 160 degree oven? Is that what I'm going to be as a franchisee? You know, what if you find out that the picture was just plain wrong and it wasn't really the franchisee that was pictured behind the grill, it was an employee? Don't assume. Get the facts before you make a decision. And get the facts before you even, uh, you know, uh, dismiss a franchise concept. Um, I'm not saying to have a conversation with everyone, but if you have enough interest and you and, and you can afford the franchise, you know, request information and have that first phone call. All right, don't talk yourself out of something uh, before you have enough facts to do it. You know, and here are some questions to ask during that call. How long has the franchise or been in business? Ask the franchise salesperson, the franchise director, how long he or she has been with the company. I'd like to see longevity. However, having said that. You know, uh, the franchise industry isn't the only industry that uh, uh, sees people come and go. Uh, you know, the average job in corporate America lasts about three and a half years, three years. So um, I'm okay with people coming and going, but I know for me, when I was a franchise broker, when I used to get paid commission to match people up to franchises, which I don't anymore, by the way, um, uh, I used to really like the fact that the, the representatives had a lot of time at, at, at the franchise companies. You know, it was very comforting. It, it said to me that it's a solid company. So it's not a game changer if, if the franchise director has only been there a few months, but find out why and find out where he or she was before. Um, it, it's just a good question to ask. No one thinks of it. Um, you want to know, of course, how many franchises they have. And here's a good one. Ask them what they look for in a franchisee, in a potential franchisee. You know, why are they going to like you? I think it's really, really important. Now, let's get to the really important part of the webinar franchisee questions. If you get far enough down the path and you show a lot of interest and the franchisor shows a lot of interest in you, um, it's going to be time to get on the phone and talk to existing franchisees. Uh, you are going to get a list of franchisees from the franchisor, most likely. Um, these are franchisees that are used to getting phone calls. Uh, most of them are going to be obviously pretty successful. Uh, but in the franchise disclosure document, there is a list every franchisee that is currently in the system, and here's an added bonus, folks, uh, there's a list of everyone that's left the system also in the franchise disclosure document. You can contact them, too, and find out why. And just because they're listed in that document does not mean that they failed and that they had to close down their business. They may have transferred it to a family member or sold it. Okay, a lot of stuff can happen. So once again, find out. You just ask. Anyway, here are some great questions to ask franchisees. The first one, how do you rate your training? You know, franchise salespeople, franchise development directors tend to, to say that their training is the best. We have top-level training. It's unbelievable. It's a combination of online training and in-person training. You know, it is the best in the business. Okay, great. I would say that too, but you would want to ask the franchisees, how was the training? Was it what you expected? Here's a good one. And you might not want to ask it, especially if you're really emotionally attached to the franchise that you're that you're looking at, because it, it just feels right and you're really excited. But I want you to ask it anyway. Are you aware of any unhappy franchises, franchisees? You know, ask the people you're calling, and I want you to call 10 to 15 franchisees. Um, ask the people you're calling if they know of any franchisees that are really, really unhappy. Here's why. You want to make sure that there aren't too many of them. And you want to make sure that there's not a pattern. You know, if you're if you're working with a franchise company and you 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 keep hearing over and over, oh, the franchise or they're really nice people, especially at first, they're great at selling franchises. But man, once they get my money, I can't find them. You don't want to find that out after you write the check. All right, so find out if there's some un unhappy franchisees and find out why. Ask this of the franchisee, the ones that you're calling. If you could do this over again, would you buy the same franchise? What a great question. Uh, 
you know, this one can be a game changer because it's it even though it's it's kind of a yes and no answer, yes or no answer. Um, I guarantee that it's going to be more than a yes or no answer, and you might hear some some things that you never would have heard um, if you didn't ask this question. Try it; it's really really powerful. All right. Um, if you become a franchisee, you want to have a few people to call on that that aren't necessarily a corporate. You want to find some franchisees that can almost be mentors. So while you're on the phone, and if you feel an especially good bond with a few of the franchisees that you're calling to do your research, ask them, if you become a franchise owner, can you call them for advice and tips? Believe me, um, if they feel that you're, you're for real, uh, they'll be happy to say yes. You call me. Don't you worry. All right? Very, very important. Let's review a couple things now. You know, you, you're going to make some important decisions. These are life-changing decisions. If you don't do fantastic franchise research, you could end up losing your money. Plan your next steps. You know, is it is, is the next step for you calling a banker? Uh, is the next step for you getting a hold of an accountant to help you with a business plan? You know, what is the next step? Find out and then take action. You know, a lot of people talk about getting into business for themselves. Here's a little secret. Very few people do it because it's scary. Not everyone is cut out for the risk that, it, that, that is required to own a business. I don't care if it's a franchise business or an independent business startup. It's still risky. But the cool thing with franchising is that research does wonders. You just have to do great research. You know, you really have to ask the questions of the franchisees at the right time. For example, don't do this. Hi, this is Joel Lababa calling. I live in Cleveland, Ohio, and I see that you're in Idaho. And even though, you know, there's no, no chance I'm going to move to Idaho to buy a franchise, I figured I'd call you because, uh, you know, you're far enough away, and I figured you'll, you'll answer my questions honestly. Is that okay, uh, Ms., Mr. Jones? Well, sure, uh, Joel from Cleveland. Go, go right ahead. What would you like to know? Well, Mr. Jones, um, how much are you making? How much money do you make? That's not the way to do it, folks. Uh, you will either hear um, some not very nice words or you will hear this. Silence, right, click. Um, don't start off don't, don't start off franchise research calls by asking how much they're making. Warm up a little bit. Warm up. And uh, uh, I show you just how to do that uh, in my uh, research ebook, as, as you'll, you'll soon see. You really need to, need to know when to ask the questions, who to ask the questions of, and what questions to ask. And my ebook has 30 must-ask questions. And